At this turning of the 21st century, we're living in a revolution which is profoundly more important than any of the many technological revolutions that have changed the world and have changed the way that we think throughout history. I speak, of course, of the enormous changes which the internet is bringing to society. We are a world which is more connected than it's ever been, in which ideas spark across the ether in very little time and in which the society itself is arguably changed. That's why the Church of Scotland Society, Church and Society Council instituted this uh, working party to look at the effect of the internet revolution on society and to look reflect reflectively at some of the challenges which it presents. We started our work uh, a couple of years ago now and we spent a lot of time assembling evidence from experts in many fields and a great deal of time in reflection. And we've come up with something which I think is deeper and perhaps gives people more cause to think than the immediate knee-jerk reactions. You know the sort of knee-jerk reaction. The internet is, in the words of 1066 and all that, a good thing, or it is a bad thing. Well, we try to avoid that kind of sim simplistic approach. The truth is that the connectivity that has been brought about has created a world in which there is a new form of space, a cyberspace, in which we relate with one another, we interact with one another, and that cyberspace is very much a contested space. Once upon a time, it seems strange to be talking of the early 1990s and describing it as once upon a time, but once upon a time, when the internet started, uh, the World Wide Web started, it was the domain of a small group of people, mainly academics, who had certain shared values. And you could say then that there was a single ethos, a spirit of the web and of the broader internet. The two expressions are, of course, not the same. But as time has gone on and more and more people have become connected to this virtual universe, <coughs> we've discovered a world in which there are now competing and contesting values. There are cries for control, but there is a technology which is international, which knows no boundaries, and which, don't believe people who say it can't be controlled, but it's very difficult to control. And why, one asks, does one want to control anyway? Because there is then the contested space between those who seek to control, those who seek the greatest of liberty, and those who seek to find a balance between. But it's not only questions of control. It's questions of contestation over self. The universe that is created by the internet is unforgiving and unforgetting. In a real sense, we are where we have been, and so we develop multiple personalities. There are personalities which we create for ourselves, a Facebook profile, for example. But there are other personalities we might know are being created for us, um, shopping profiles that we build on Amazon, for example, but there are other virtual personalities of which we may be entirely unaware. We fittingly put our feet on the sands of an ephemeral website, and yet the internet never forgets. So we have, then, a space which is contested in terms of who controls it, who calls the shots, the gov governments or the people or someone else. We have a space which is contested in 
terms of its values, you cannot assume in um, an internet where increasing numbers of its users are neither from the geographical north nor the west, neither are not of the first world, that European Christian values will be the prevailing set of values. We have a space which is contested in terms of the self, the personality, and it raises then huge areas about um, what exactly is this space in which we relate also to God. The traditional view of our faith is that it is incarnational and it is about the relationship seen in terms of righteousness between humanity and God. The Word, which is the virtue if you like, becomes flesh. But in a universe in which there is no incarnation, in which we exist virtually, what does that say about our relationship between humanity and God? There's a lot of themes to deal with, and of course we also deal with the themes of manipulative technology, the use of the internet for e-commerce, the way that people's um, spending and life decisions are subtly affected by the technology, the more familiar questions that people have been asking. But you put all these together and you see just the huge extent of what there is to reflect upon and inquire into. Now, I'm not going to tell you what our conclusions are because I really want you to go and read the report. There will be in the Blue Book a shortened version. Um, it's a very much shortened version and it serves no more than to give you the flavour of where we're coming from. But it doesn't give the depth that's necessary for proper, mature and sober reflection. The full report is going to be launched at the Edinburgh Science Festival and it will be available on the internet, fittingly, but we're hoping also to have it available in printed form on uh, request. I would urge you to read the full report. The Church cannot go sleepwalking and without due reflection into this contested space. If we're going to be in there contesting the space, if we're going to be in there looking at the way that we can change the space and the space changes us, we need to be prepared. So could I suggest that a little bit like the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy was um, the guide for an earlier generation as they went out into space those of you who are of my generation and remember Radio 4 will get the illusion. Um, I could modest, modestly suggest that this report is going to be the survival guide for a new generation and will equip that generation to face up to the challenges that the internet brings to us all.